We are covering a mystery and a massive search this morning. Overnight, this anguished scene as family members learned that Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 simply vanished with 239 people on board while flying from Kuala Lumpur, which is in Malaysia, to Beijing. Such devastating news. And take a look at this. Reporters in China swarming a news conference held by airline officials. Now, here's what we know at this hour. The flight went off the radar in the South China Sea near Vietnam. And right now, there's an air and sea search and rescue mission for that Boeing 777, which never sent out a distress signal, which indicates that whatever happened, happened quickly. Yes, and this is going to be a complicated search and rescue mission on board passengers from 14 different countries there were three Americans on board including an infant and we're going to begin our coverage with ABC's Bob Woodruff who's at the airport in Beijing Bob good morning to you good morning Dan this is terminal 3 of the Beijing airport where that plane was supposed to land early this morning sadly of course it did not now that information from the airlines have been creeping out very very slowly and that has been very very frustrating to the families in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysian Airlines CEO spoke solemnly to the press. Malaysia Airlines confirmed that this flight and HP 70 lost contact with Subang Air Traffic Control at 2.40 a.m. this morning. The plane was due to fly from Malaysia's capital, Kuala Lumpur, to Beijing, China. It went off the radar somewhere off the southern tip of Vietnam. 227 passengers from 14 different countries and 12 crew members were on board the Boeing 777. Among them, three Americans, two of them children. Here at this Beijing hotel room today, family members gathered in tears. I don't want to live. What is the point of me being alive, says this mother, whose 40-year-old son was on board the plane. In frustration with the airlines, this woman said they were only given water and bread in the room. By the time the company's officials came out to talk, hundreds of reporters had poured in, crushing into each other just to get close. At one point, I could barely move. I'm out of control here. I just can't even believe this. The search is now happening off the coast of Vietnam, covering more than 4,000 square miles. We have uh, uh, requested assistance, first on information of whereabouts the planes may be, and secondly, if there is uh, a need for uh, search and rescue, which we cannot cope. Well, now the night has fallen here in Asia, and for the search and rescue teams, that, of course, is making it harder and harder for them to operate off the coast of Vietnam. Biana? So much. So heartbreaking to see those families waiting to get news. Well, we are learning who was behind the controls. The pilot of the plane, Captain Zahari Ahmad Shah, was a veteran. He joined the company 33 years ago and has over 18,000 flying hours. We're also just learning that searchers are finding an oil slick. That's not good news. ABC's David Curley is live in Washington with the latest. Good morning, David. Good morning, Bianca. It's the Vietnamese government that is reporting that they have found two oil slicks off their coast as this investigation begins into how exactly this plane just disappeared. The safety record of the Boeing 777 is one of the best in aviation. The missing aircraft is a 200 model, 11 years old. The veteran 53-year-old pilot has been with Malaysia Air for 31 years. Boeing is already assembling an investigative team and in a statement said, quote, we are closely monitoring reports on Malaysia flight MH370. Our thoughts are with everyone on board. This is a wide-body jetliner that can fly for hours on just one of its two engines. It was reportedly at altitude above 30,000 feet when it just disappeared. So where is the jet possible wreckage? Did it suffer catastrophic failure, or did the pilots miss important clues about the jet's performance? If the 777 went down in the ocean, answers to those questions will be more difficult to answer. Finding the black boxes with all that vital information becomes much more difficult. The last big jetliner to disappear like this was an Air France flight, which went down in 2009. It was years before the black boxes were found, and the mystery of that flight was solved. A combination then of equipment failure and the pilots failing to see the problem. To have the airplane come out of the sky intact, very much like the Air France flight a couple of years ago in, uh, over the mid-Atlantic, indicates a, uh, a loss of flight control capability of one sort or another and a deep stall on the airplane. This morning there are some conflicting timelines that we're hearing coming out of Malaysia on the last communication with the jetliner when it disappeared from radar. Some questions that really do have to be answered. It is likely that U.S. investigators at some point from the NTSB will join their Asian counterparts in trying to unravel the mystery of Malaysian Flight 370.
Back to you guys. David, thank you. Let's get more on this now from ABC News aviation consultant, Colonel Stephen Ganyard. Colonel, thanks for joining us this morning. Walk us through how something like this could happen. Obviously, we don't yet know, but there is a range of potential causes. What, what's in that range? There, there is, Dan. Uh, any mishap usually has some, some key elements that are common to all mishaps. Uh, they'll be looking at things like weather. Did weather play a factor as it did in the Air France uh, mishap off Brazil that David was just talking about? Was there pilot error? Uh, was there some kind of a catastrophic failure or was there some kind of uh, combination of all of those? In this case also, because it's so unusual for an airplane to just disappear like this, uh, it, it's almost inexplicable. So they'll probably broaden their range of, of uh, investigation to look at terrorism. You know, you, you use the word rare. Most crashes happen on takeoff or landing. So for a plane to disappear in midair, just give us a sense, how, how rare is that? This is, this is so rare. It is, it is absolutely baffling. And it's baffling that we don't have any better answers this, this long after the mishap actually occurred. So lots of, lots of questions to be answered. There's very, very little uh, direct evidence, very few facts that we can go on. So everything we're doing now is, is speculation. So the, the, we can't get the answers, really, until we find the wreckage, assuming there, there is wreckage and assuming the plane crashed. Um, when you don't have a mayday signal, how hard is it to find a plane in the open water? This is going to, this is going to be very difficult. And one of the reasons it's going to be very difficult was the same reason the Air France off Brazil crash was difficult, because it sounds like this aircraft was out of radar coverage. Radars only go out about 200 miles, and in this part of the world, their coverage is very spotty. And so they probably were just uh, reporting at different positions along the, their planned flight route, and they weren't even in radar contact. So all we know is the, is the altitude and the airspeed and the heading that they should have been on on at the last point that they were talking to air traffic controllers. Other than that, we have no idea where they are. That said, it's fairly shallow water. It's not deep Atlantic water. It's fairly shallow South China Sea water. And so we, I think we do have a good chance of hearing those pingers, those underwater pingers that the black boxes have that will allow us to go out and find the wreckage somewhere between Vietnam and Malaysia. Colonel Stephen Ganyard, we really appreciate uh, your expertise on this breaking story. Thank you. Yeah. It's so alarming, alarming to hear him use the word terrorism potentially mm -hmm. as a cause for mm -hmm. this as well. Of course, our thoughts and prayers are with the family members who are still waiting to hear news.